My name is Edward O, middle initial, Wilson, and I'm sometimes referred to as E.O. Wilson. We biologists recollect, too, that E.O. Is, means primitive, you know, like the E.O. scene. So, uh, in a way, I guess some people think I'm the primitive Wilson, but it doesn't matter. I'm here in the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard University. And this is my desk, and uh, this is a mess. But I'm told that that's a sign of an active mind. I'll be 83 in June, but I don't feel that way because I've just, in the last year, worked in Ecuador, in Mozambique, in the island country of Vanuatu, studying ants. Plenty of new species. I happen to have hit upon ants, believe it or not, when I was nine years old. Ants being very small attracted me, well, partly because I have vision in only one eye. I had an accident with a fish while I was fishing, so I haven't been too good at spotting things, you know, in the distance or parallaxing. But once I got interested in ants, I couldn't let go of them. Well, that's because I, I never discovered a fact I didn't love. And fortunately, this then evolved into a scientific career, which stretches over 60 years now, working on ants. There are 14,000 known species of ants and I've uh, studied quite a few of them. In fact, I've discovered and given the name, a Latin name, to 450 of them. This is the biggest ant collection in the world. We have perhaps a million specimens. Discovering a new species is nothing to, the, to us working in a museum like this. They, in fact, are a bit of a burden, but you know, what science, good science, gets done without going through a lot of tedium. When I studied the classification and distribution of ants, I came up with ideas and principles out of that about the origin of the human condition. I don't feel as though that's um, an Einsteinian advance or a quantum mechanical advance. For me, it's common sense. But I've been through two uh, episodes in which I've had substantial numbers of colleagues, how shall I put it, peeved. The first one was sociobiology. And that simply said that human beings have a nature, that we have instincts. Well, in the 70s, as I discovered, um, that was not popular among social scientists. In fact, they, the social scientists generally held the view that that everything is determined by culture, history, and the circumstances of the environment in which people grow up. Well, that was manifestly wrong, even in that time. But the second one is much more recent, and that's the one on uh, the subjects of kin selection and new ways of approaching the origin of altruism. When we finished with the two mathematicians I was working with, one crucial meeting especially, I then called on Darwin. And I said, do you agree with everything we've concluded? That improved our spirit a great deal. <laughs> but Schopenhauer put it just right. Uh, all truth, if that's what you're dealing with, are met first with ridicule, then with outrage, and finally, with the acceptance saying, well, it's essentially what we knew all along. So we are now, I would say, very much in the middle of outrage. But I notice some of them are entering in the next phase. If that's the way it gets settled, that's just fine with me. This is a backwoods fiddle. 
Um, you know, we're going to lose a lot of Earth's biodiversity. It's almost inevitable. But I'm hoping that uh, we're beginning to wake up. I don't think I'm any different from anyone else. It's just that probably I've studied it more than most people, that is biodiversity. I've been to more places in the world with rich and fascinating faunas and floras. And I also understand the tremendous power that a natural, unspoiled wilderness can do for human self-understanding and even human self-regard. I was just recently on the island of New Caledonia and we found the um, Araucaria forest, which is this ancient forest. It was a Jurassic forest, the real thing. And I thought to myself, that's what we've got to save for the future of humanity, for our spirit to have a sense of awe about what is left around us that transcends anything we can invent ourselves.